All right, welcome back. Thanks for following this series on what's your attachment style and why does it matter? We are going to start with discussing the secure attachment style. Okay, so the attitude of this person tends to be quite confident um, in themselves and in relationships, they practice interdependence which is basically they're independent, but they can depend on others. Others can depend on them. They're not codependent. They're not counterdependent. They're interdependent. I'll talk more about that in a moment, but they've got a positive view on life, on themselves and others. So they don't really deal with any outstanding, overwhelming fears of being controlled in relationships or exploited or suffocated. And this is usually because they come from childhoods where they had a strong emotional bond to a caregiver or a parent uh, that made them feel like they were safe. And that gave them a very positive outlook on life. And in some way, maybe uh, these parents or caregivers had some kind of calming, comforting effect upon them. Now it's said that like 55% of children have this style or this type of upbringing, okay, which gives them this type of attachment style. I I don't know, maybe. That's just not been my experience, okay? Um, but again, it, it might be, you know, who I attracted in my life. It's just, I, I've met a lot of people who are coming from an insecure attachment style. So I'd be interested to know down below, how many of you have met people with a secure attachment style? Because I, I read that number from the research and I'm like, I don't know about that. Y'all tell me what you think in the comments down below. But basically people who have this, type of upbringing, what usually ends up happening is that in adulthood with this type of attachment style, like I said, they are interdependent in relationships. They don't fear abandonment. They don't fear commitment, compromise. They don't fear exploitation. They're dependable and they're able to depend on others, okay? It's, it's mutual, it's reciprocal. And they're also comfortable with emotional intimacy and closeness and at the same time they're comfortable with autonomy and being alone you know having alone time they bond in healthy relationships because they're emotionally attuned not just to other people but also themselves so they're very cooperative and flexible in the way that they present themselves in relationships and they also build and maintain a sense of security and trust in those relationships. When they communicate, they do it very directly. And even when they're upset, they communicate in a way that's easy for other people to follow and comprehend, right? They don't get scattered or overwhelmed or shut down. They keep going in this clear, direct way so that others can pick up and engage, right? And, and exchange. They communicate in a way that is engaging and they're also engaged in the conversation so that there's some kind of flow and back and forth. Again, balance, give and take in that conversation. Nobody's really dominating or monopolizing. They're also very coherent. They're present in the moment and they're active in these conversations. So this might be because they tend to have this ability to separate thoughts from feelings they don't let their emotions overrun them, nor their thoughts. There's a balanced flow of emotional and informational energy. They tend to be empathetic, trusting, but at the same time, they set healthy limits and boundaries with that trust. They're emotionally available when needed. They can be very warm and responsive to others, but at the same time, they accept their own need and other people's need for separateness alone time without feeling lonely or rejected. They're able to manage and self-regulate their emotions without being conflict avoidant. A lot of times people who have this attachment style, their way of thinking and believing is something along the lines of, she's there for me when I need her and I'm there for her when she needs me or He's calming for me. We calm each other. We love each other. There's a lot of we. Now, even in the best case scenario, you know, there can be breakups, right? And in those instances, when someone with a secure attachment style goes through a breakup, they tend to look at it more constructively as an opportunity to better understand oneself, 
to become more self-aware about what they actually need in a relationship in order to be happy. I don't know that anyone, even with a secure attachment style, is, you know, not going to be bothered by a breakup. Everybody is. But for them, yes, they feel their feelings. They're attuned to their emotional needs in that moment. And they self-soothe. They don't allow themselves to spiral out of control. Like, for example, spiraling is, for those of you who don't know, is like, you know, allowing yourself to sink deeper and deeper into depression or allowing yourself to be overcome by overwhelming anger, frustration, hopelessness. They don't allow spiraling. They self-soothe because they recognize their own emotional needs and they meet them. And they don't accept the loss as some sign of lowered self-worth or being undesirable. They don't really personalize it. Instead, they will rely upon other relationships that are solid, such as with friends and family, to get the support that they know they need and deserve. So if you have a secure attachment style, bravo, like, <laughs> we need more of that, okay? Um, but I think the advice and goals for somebody with that attachment style is that they have to continue to develop more of that emotional quotient, the EQ, right? Um, and also develop their ability to articulate their emotions, you know, their, their, their own emotions and to help others around them articulate their emotions. And then also continue to develop and solidify your assertiveness skills, your ability to kind of press through in difficult moments and communicate those emotional needs. Okay, so the next one that we're gonna discuss is the anxious style, which if you are a codependent or an empath, my gosh, this is the one you gotta watch. And I'm definitely gonna be talking more about that because um, sorry to say I got some experience with that one. <laughs> so I hope you will join me um, for the next video in the series and uh, make sure if you haven't already uh, activated the bell for notifications, please do so so that you're notified when that is released. Thanks for watching.